All right, for more on the House's short-term spending bill, we are joined by Republican Congressman from Oklahoma, member of the House Budget Committee, Josh Breachin. Congressman, thank you so much. Um, hey, appreciate it. Burkine, I, I, uh, I know that, that last name's tough. Oh, I'm sorry about that. My sincere apologies. And this is my first time talking to you, so I, I hope you'll not hold it against me and you'll come no, back soon. it's a tough last name. <laughs> so, Congressman, you're a member of the Freedom Caucus, um, and I understand you voted yesterday on the continuing resolution, so I would imagine that you'd probably support this as well. Um, correct no. me if I'm wrong. No, uh, you, yeah, you would be wrong. I uh, supported a 30% cut yesterday uh, to everything outside of veterans, homeland security. Um, you know, my uh, emphasis, uh, you know, leaving the free market, running for Congress, is we've got to turn the trajectory of a nation that's headed towards bankruptcy. And so what was on the floor yesterday was a 30 percent cut to everything in the discretionary budget outside veterans, homeland, and uh, defense. And it also included real border security. And so uh, the vote before us here in a few moments is going to be a continuing resolution that I cannot support because it's not going to be inclusive of, of spending cuts and border security. We, we live in, in short term, and this country is facing long term problems that have to be addressed. So it, it, with that position, sir, what does a government shutdown get you? Well, in terms of the government shutdown, there's not anybody, I think, on Capitol Hill who enjoys a government shutdown. What we are asking for in, the, in you know, those of us who have a, a shared position is that we have the strongest hand going into a position with a Senate-led uh, you know, Senate-led Democrats who want to spend more, they don't see that the average family of four is spending $1,200 more per month right now to buy the exact same goods and services as the, that same family of four was bought, spending uh, in January of 2021. That's the cost of inflation. That's the excessive government spending devaluing our currency. And that's almost $15,000 a year that every family in America, uh, that hidden tax of inflation. And so, again, I go back to short-term versus long-term, it's always the short-term crisis that stops us from, from dealing with the long-term problems. Mm -hmm. The long-term problems, inflation is just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Within five years, we're going to spend more just to service our debt than right. we spend on defense of this country. Congressman, I understand your principal. Griff Jenkins here. Thank you for joining us, by the way. And I just want to ask you this, though. I just came back from 10 days of the border at Eagle Pass, where they are dealing with a Category 5 hurricane, as described to me. Reporting today, more than 260,000 migrants have arrived illegally at our border in the month of September, the highest month ever on record. And yet, if the government shuts down, they must work and they will not get a paycheck until the government opens up again. However, every member of Congress will receive a paycheck during a shutdown. That's a constitutionally protected amendment. Are you OK with that? Uh, no, it's why I'm going to make sure that I suffer uh, alongside anyone else. My office specifically is going to make sure that my salary goes into escrow so that I, um, I believe that a good leader is a servant. And I want to make sure I'm experiencing whatever the consequences are. So I'd say that first and foremost. And we're going to be running legislation. My staff and I have already talked it through. The 27th Amendment prohibits us to do anything about our salaries in current session, but doesn't, in, you know, futuristically. And so we've already discussed it as of yesterday. How can we push this this measure forward to make sure that it's not just by, by escrow, but it's actually something statutorily we can do? And my office is going to be doing that. Um, on the border, look, let me say why this is so important. It, you, Fox does a great job of highlighting what very few people uh, know. I'm on not only on budget, I'm also on the Homeland Security Committee. So week after week, I'm in those hearings along with Mark Green. And we're doing a great job of, of trying to show to the American people that this real calamity, um, the human trafficking, the 18 to 45 year old, uh, you know, that, that segment of death that is 70,000 a year, 70,000 deaths, leading cause of death for that age group. But it's more than that. The cost to our, our emergency services, our hospitals, education, FAIR, uh, informed by the family, uh, Kaiser Family Foundation, says just the federal taxpayer dollar alone on an annual basis is $66 billion. Most of that is health care. 
um, for what's happening at the border. But it's Congressman, if you billion. shut the government down, I don't, I don't mean to be rude here, but if you shut the government down, the men and women that are trying to stop that from happening, that are overworked, underpaid, and are, they're at a breaking point, have to do it without being able to tell their spouses how they're going to make ends meet, how they're going to pay the mortgage, how they're going to buy groceries. The ones that have been triaged to other sectors because they had to go to Eagle Pass or El Paso from a different place, they're going to have a government paycheck a government credit card with a bill due that nobody's going to bail them out. So, so, so Griff, um, in 2019, what happened was that the federal law changed. So this will be the first shutdown since that has occurred where not only is it customary, now it's by law. Anyone who you know, does not receive their paycheck on time is absolutely going to make sure that they get paid. Is there going to be some uncomfort if this thing goes past 15 to 30 days? I agree with you. The question many of us are asking is, should we go to the Senate with a, uh, an ask that is so much in line with, with them that we end up getting nothing? We're, we are asked to be a reflection of our voters. You well, ask, one, sir, one, one point about that, though, because so if you vote down this continuing resolution coming out of the House, the Senate sends over their own CR, which is going to pass with 70 plus votes. How do you have more leverage then? How do you, your colleagues are saying that you're going to be eating a an S word sandwich if that situation comes to pass? The, the ability for us to be able to have leverage in the House is getting 218 votes. And it's why some of us were leaning pretty heavily, believing the best way for that was to make sure that we are highlighting what is the catastrophe at the border, the fiscal cost of that border, and what inflation is doing to the average American family. Ask that American family that's spending $15,000 more per year right now than they were just two years ago to buy the exact same things. What's the biggest real impact right now with what your government is doing to you by not being responsible? Well, I'm, I'm reading so, to you the like text messages I'm getting from your Republican colleagues. I mean, that that was not my quote. That was someone else's words. But you know, there you have folks calling your caucus extremists. Um, what is your response to that? Well, I'm a reflection of the constituency that sent me to Washington, D.C., that, that really sees that for every dollar we're spending, 37 cents is what we're charging to our kids and our grandkids. And, and everybody talks about it, but then everybody is a conservative until it comes time to do the conservative thing. And what I've been asked to do is, is to stand up for principle and say, look out for my kids and my grandkids. They deserve the blessing of liberty that I've experienced. And so, look. Am, am I telling you that, uh, that uh, you know, the perfect solution is only found within 20 or 30? You got to listen to people. But what I'm trying to do is to find among the 218 where we can all rally around. Yesterday, we were really close to rallying around, standing for border security and standing for cuts. Mm -hmm. That's my hope. I believe that's the perfection that can be found in 218 votes. Our viewers are watching uh, on the right side of their screen there, the House Minority Leader, Hakeem Jeffries, no doubt railing on Republicans. They see this as a victory for them, and they, too, would see a motion to vacate Kevin McCarthy as Speaker as a victory as well, just a little while. A while ago outside the Capitol, Matt Gates was talking about that, essentially saying that if indeed this deal is cut with Democrats and they pass something with this CR, this bill that's just been dropped, that he's all but assured to do to put forward that motion to vacate. Is that something you would support? Griff, I, and I'm thankful that you all let me put this earpiece in before I get on this interview with you. I, I got to catch his interview just by watching on your screen here. And what I heard him say is that was not his focus. I think that Matt is wise not to make that his focus. We got to be focused on the budget. But you don't think it's coming? He's been well, saying I, he's going to do just, a motion to vacate since the beginning of time. Well, look, I, nobody knows anybody's heart and mind. You know, that's a question for him. What I heard him say a while ago is, and I, this is where I think we need to stay focused, is, is on this budget for the American people. I heard him say his speakership is on tenuous, shaky ground. I, that reads to me like it. we don't have to have this, this debate on live television. You know, I appreciate you bringing your, your perspective and um, appreciate you outlining your principles here and the reasons behind your votes. Um, thank you for your time, sir. Absolutely. Hey, God bless you all. Thank you for coming in. And, and, and uh, if you get any breaking news, please, we'll have you back. We, we appreciate your time. And I won't hey, screw I, up your I, name I, next time. <laughs> Thank you. God bless y'all. Thank right. you, sir. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now.